in this video I will be asking if we can rely on statistical modeling. Let me start with an example where it went badly wrong. <clears throat> way back in 1985, the management of a British petrol company promised a cash prize to any motorist whose number plate matched one of those displayed at their filling stations. Each petrol station was given a carefully calculated but different list, depending on its position. Some very able statisticians had worked out the likelihood of drivers spotting their own car numbers and subsequently claiming their prizes. Those statisticians were confident of just how much the scheme was going to cost the company, within controllable margins of error. Unfortunately, the assumptions in the model were short-circuited by a singular anomaly that wrecked the calculations. What happened was that some police officers had driven around the various filling stations, noting down the winning numbers. These same officers then used the police national computer to identify the name and address of the winning car owners. For a share of the winnings, the policeman told the owners where to go in order to collect the prizes. Needless to say, the company soon pulled the plug on the scheme as they began hemorrhaging cash. Now, the reason for this failure is what I choose to call the fallacy of the independent variable. The, the notion of an independent variable is fundamental to all scientific experiments and to mathematical and statistical models. An independent variable is a causal factor within an experiment or a model that may be adjusted in a controllable way. The dependent variables are then the ensuing effects which are measured by the experimenter. The aim is to demonstrate a functional relationship between the independent and the dependent variables so that decisions can be made that align with objectives. Now in our example among the independent variables were the location of the filling station and the address of the car owner uh, from which the dependent variables including the distance from house to the filling station could be calculated along with the probability that an owner would chance across their car registration on the list. <coughs> no doubt the company's model had many more sophisticated variables both independent and dependent but you get my drift. The problem is that the concept of an independent variable is a form of linear thinking that works well in a laboratory uh, where variables can be controlled. However, it can go awry whenever previously unknown singularities enter the process and the resulting feedback destroys all the assumed randomness in the model. This is what happened in our example when the statistics didn't take into account the singularity of the police national computer. Don't you just love the way singularities undermine expectations? Particularly when they are deliberately thrown into the mix, often with very dubious motives, which is exactly what I once did when speaking at a, a commercial conference that was grandly entitled Managing Uncertainty. I was sharing the stage with a statistician. He had droned on and on for 45 minutes about statistical distributions and expectations. Now, you can imagine that the business audience found it inspiring stuff. Within five minutes, eyes began to glaze over. After 10, he had an audience of one, me. I was on the stage, I had to listen to him, and not once did he mention singularity in his talk. Then it was my turn to speak. I walked over to the podium and I just stood there. 
and stood there. And stood there for, for a whole minute. I just stood there and I fidgeted and I shot frantic glances at the audience. At first there was silence, then a few murmurs, finally a growing rumble of concern. The chairman rose to help me. He was halfway across the stage when I banged my fist on the table and announced, now that's uncertainty. It's got nothing to do with statistics. Rhetoric trumps logic every time. We live in a world of original sin, where sinners can be very original and very, very singular. Statistics cannot deal with the singularities that emerge spontaneously whenever devious humans are involved in a process. For then, the variables involved can never be totally independent of one another, or independent of observers for that matter. Life is like a poker game. There, there's a lot of bluffing going on. and Players who put their faith in the statistical distribution of the cards are going to lose their shirts. Now, as for me, I, I've learned to play this poker game like my cat Oscar. Oscar is a very special cat because he can talk. Now, some friends came visiting recently and when I told them that he could talk, they did a quick risk assessment and then they bet me a 10 to 1, 10 to 1 that he couldn't talk. I called Oscar over, but he just sat there. Meow. He didn't say a word, so they took my money and left. I glared at him and said, there's no fish for you tonight. But then in a very superior voice, because Oscar is a very superior cat, he purred, call yourself a professor. Tomorrow night we'll get 100 to 1. Oscar's message to you is that you must look beyond statistics, beyond functionality, beyond the good intentions of the statisticians and modelers, towards the consequential, observable, non-linear singularities that occur in all human activity systems, and then take advantage of them. So think on and expect the unexpected. Thank you.